let's review what we know about trees. I'm going to go through one of the old midterm questions. This is from 2011 fall, midterm two. A question about trees and writing tree recursive functions that process trees. So if you want to do this question on your own, you should stop watching now and watch this later. Okay, so it says, consider the binary tree class below, which has no entry attribute. So what's going on there? Well, the tree that we've looked at most so far has three different attributes, an entry, a left, and a right. In this case, we've left out the entry because we only care about the structure of the tree, not the value at each root. So the important thing to know about trees, and that is included in this particular tree, is that the left tree should either be a tree instance or not. And the right tree should be a tree instance or not. And a well-formed tree won't contain itself. So no cycles like we saw in the last video. Now, uh, what this class tree does is it has a base class of an object, which is the same as having no base class at all a doc string, a binary tree with no entry, a constructor, which takes in the new tree that's being constructed, and then the left and the right tree, which default to none. If both are none, this is called a leaf because there's no tree below it. And then it sets self.left to left and self.right to right. And then we see that we're creating some trees and we've depicted them below. So if we create a tree with no left branch, but its right branch is a tree that has a leaf at its left branch and its right branch is a tree with a leaf at its right branch, we get this structure. So this is a tree with no left branch, but its right branch is a tree whose left branch is a leaf and its right branch is a tree with a leaf to the right, just like I said before. Okay, so that's a mouthful. B is much smaller. It's a tree with a tree to its right, which is a leaf. So leaves are created just by calling tree, open print, close print. Uh, C is a longer chain, and D is a tree that has both a left and a right branch, each of which are leaves. Then we ask the following question. Write a function proved that takes two tree arguments, T1 and T2, and returns whether T2 is a pruned version of T1. T2 is a pruned version of T1 if all paths from the root of T2 are also valid paths from the root of T1. So what's a path? A path is just a sequence of trees. So for instance, if I start here and then I go to the right, I find another tree. So that's a path from here to here. And that same path exists from here to here because this tree is to the right of this tree. So if we look at each pair of trees, A paired with some other T2, we find that B is a pruned version of A because every path in B, namely the one that just starts here or the one that starts here and then goes to the right that come here, also exists in A. And so there's B just contained within the root of A. And C likewise is a pruned version of A because there's C right there. But D is not. So we find that pruned AD is false because there's a path that starts at the root and then goes left to find a leaf. And such a path does not exist. If we start at the root of A, we cannot go to the left to find a leaf because there's just nothing there. So this is a recursive function. Think about how to write it and then we'll look at it ourselves. Okay, so here's our four examples. We just went through all the details. If we just look at A and C, for instance, we can get the recursive idea for how to solve this problem, which is that if A, oh, sorry, if C is a pruned version of A, then it means C is contained in A, and it implies that the right branch of C is a pruned version of the right branch of A. So there's the right branch of A, there's the right branch of C, and we find that's what's left over here also appears here. And that's the recursive idea. So what about c.left? Well, there is no c.left. And so if we find that there's nothing there, that's a good indication 
that we have found a pruned version of anything because there are no paths in none. So they must, all of those no paths must be contained in whatever T1 is. Uh, what's the recursive idea if something is not a pruned version? So let's look at D, which looks like that. If it were the case that D were a pruned version of A, that would mean that the left branch of D was a pruned version of the left branch of A. So that, just that single root node, a leaf, would have to be a pruned version of none. But it's not, because there's a path here, just using that one leaf, that doesn't exist in the empty tree none. So when we compare none to something that's not none, then we know that the second element is not a pruned version of the first. And we're going to write a function where the recursive call makes sure that both the left and the right are pruned versions. And the base case is that one or more trees is none. So if t2 is a pruned version of t1, well, one base case is that t2 is none, which means it has no paths, which means t1 must contain all of those paths. So it is true. If t1 is none and t2 is not, well, then in that case, there is some path in t2, but it can't possibly be contained in t1 because t1 is none, so we return false. Otherwise, we make a recursive call which checks to see whether the left branch of T2 is a pruned version of the left branch of T1, and whether the right branch of T2 is the pruned version of the right branch of T1. And then we're finished. 